promised us that he would be a counselor, a mighty God and a prince of peace. He promised us that he Well, hello everyone and welcome to Dudamus Evangelistic Outreach. My name is Elder Jesse Darrow, and we have a phenomenal teaching for you today. We're going to talk about spiritual warfare is real, and there's a battle for the mind. The Lord wants our mind, and the work of darkness wants our mind as well. Now, you will not hear me say when I get into this teaching, you will not hear me reference the devil. The reason I do not use the term the devil is because the devil is one person and he's not after us. There's adversarial forces called principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Those are the ones, the demonic rankings that we are subject to war against. But what the church has done, we've learned to use one terminology and it sounds familiar, but the devil, Lucifer, or Satan is not one that we're going to have to encounter in this life. But there are spirits sent forth to get back those that belong to the Lord. And that's what I want to talk about this week. I got such a phenomenal teaching together that I'm really excited about presenting it. Yesterday morning when I woke up, the spirit said, mind over matter. And I was startled because I had not heard that term for some time. Well, it's something that my mother used to say, mind over matter. And then my mind took me to, I was watching, I enjoy watching Navy SEALs and I like military um, programs. I even watch the military station because it helps me to understand warfare because we've entered into a spiritual battle. And so one of the things that Navy SEALs do when they're in I mean, icy water. They think about themselves being on a beach, someplace warm, someplace nice. In other words, matter being something you can taste, feel, touch, measure, as opposed to the mind, which is our reasoning, our understanding, and our perception. So the thing that we've got to learn as people of God is mind over matter. It's not that we don't see, we're not getting into denial. What we see is real, but what we are learning how to do is to ascend, tap into that third heaven, glory be to God, and enjoy all the richness of God's glory. So with that said, with that introduction made, I really, really hope that this teaching is going to be a blessing. If everyone will look at their handout, it should have, everyone should have a handout called Mind Over Matter. And I thought something that was just so fitting with this is, I, you know, the Lord always gives me some type of foundation uh, when I am, when he gives me a word, when he said mind over matter, you know, it's like he, I immediately stopped because I needed to have further instructions from the commander in chief. And so he gave me 1 Corinthians 9, and I want to read it and I want to stop periodically and explain to you what I see in this. In 1 Corinthians 9, Paul was looking maybe at a race, because he was talking about running. And he also used the term beating the air, in other words, spiring. You know, it's like we don't want to just beat the air in what we're doing. We want to be effective, and we want to take authority because of the exousia and the dunamis that the Lord has given us. So we want to beat the air, and we want to run for an incorruptible crown. So I want to read uh, 1 Corinthians 9 verses 25, and I will stop periodically and explain it. This is the New King James. Everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Okay, so there is a crown of glory, and there are many crowns, about seven crowns that the Lord has for the church. So when we enter into this spiritual race, we have to be Temperate. We have to exhibit self-control. We can't be all over the place. We can't do anything. We can't say anything. We can't look at anything. We just can't listen to just anything. We can't speak about anything. We have to be temperate. If you're going to win, if you're going to win the incorruptible crown, there's self-control that have to be exhibited. 
He said, now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. That's the unsaved. But we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run, Paul said, not with uncertainty. Now that's important, that there's a confidence that the church has as we run this race. Well, you're not going to run this race with confidence if you don't know the word of God, because you'll just be doing something. Amen? But we run with confidence because we're well rooted, rooted and grounded in God's truth, and we understand what direction we're taking in because we're being led by the Spirit. So we're not running with uncertainty. We're running with confidence if you know the word of God. He said, thus fight I, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, least when I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. So he's saying, look here, I'm not, I'm not just doing something. I'm effective, I'm, I'm, I have a method here. I'm excited, I see change, I see growth, not just in others, I see it in me, because I'm not just beating the air. You ever see a boxer who spars, they call it shallow box, we're not shallow boxing, amen? What we do, we have to do it methodically, we have to do it deliberately, and we have to do it with confidence, because there's a battle for the mind. And we've gotta learn mind over matter. And that's not a state of denial. Everybody understand that. It's not that you're denying what's going on in your life. It is the way you look at what's going on, you handle it without complaining and getting frustrated, depressed, giving up, and etc. I hope this is clear. Amen. Back to the handout. The term mind over matter means with our mind, we can reason, think, and perceive a positive thought rather than focus our being on something unpleasant or painful. That's got to have meaning. It's, you know, it's like with our mind, we reason. So therefore, whatever the challenge is today, whatever the, we're not talking about tomorrow. Tomorrow has a way of taking care of itself. Whatever your challenge or my challenge is today, I can't focus on the negativity of it. Because when I learn to tap into that third heaven where all the blessings of God is, and I learn to commune with the spirit, then the answers come down to me and I will know what to do. This has got to be clear. What we do is, is I call it piercing the darkness. If my focus is a negative one, if I'm sad, if I'm depressed, if I feel whatever it is that I feel, okay, you need to feel what you feel. It's important that you understand, I am not talking about denial, refusing to acknowledge the truth or the reality of what you have to deal with. What I am saying is, in the face of what you have to deal with, you're looking at it from a kingdom perspective and you realize that I've got to do it God's way, otherwise I'm beating the air in five years from now, I'm going to be faced with the same problem. If I don't do what I can do and rely on heaven to do the rest, change the way I see things, change the way I speak about whatever it is, I'm losing the battle of the mind, and I'm going to find myself more than likely faced with the same thing five, six, seven years from now. This has got to be clear. And I want to explain it in ways that it is clear. So if it's not, you need to ask me to either say it again or explain it again. Okay? So I'm going to go over this one more time. The term mind over matter means with our mind we can reason, think, and perceive a positive thought rather than our focus being on something unpleasant or painful. In the worst situation, there's something good that can be extracted from it. That's important. That is very, very, very important. If, if when you come in, yes, if you please come around that way, I appreciate that. For the Christian, it is important to train our thought life through meditation, prayer, scripture reading, singing, and etc. Mind over matter is a method used to minimize the impact of the overwhelming situations we will be confronted with in this life. I was watching a program one time about POWs. POWs knew that they were in a prison camp. They knew that. 
they were dropped out, and they were mistreated. What they would do is, is they would ask one another questions like, what do you remember about your wife? What do you remember about your little girl or your son? When we go home, what are you going to do when we get home? What's some of the things that you want to eat when you go home? Are you, are, you, are you hearing me? This is so important. Now there could have been some POW say, man, I don't know how we're going to get out of here. And this show is bad. And, and the Germans show dogged us out. Or if it's the Afghans or whatever the, 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 the war was, uh, uh, we could have focused on that. They could have focused on that. But they had a system to keep their minds focused on something that is positive. Mind over matter in this race is one of the most important principles you will ever need to learn. And I remember mother said that, but you know, you're a kid coming up, you know, what do you know? Uh, somebody say something you don't like, and mother said, oh, it's just a matter of mind over matter. And she had, she, it, she would turn it into a joke. They don't mind hurting you and you shouldn't, and you shouldn't matter. I mean, and you should let it matter. That's, you know, but it did. I mean, come on now, your kid words hurt. <laughs> But I learned the term, and then understanding the ways of God, it really, really escalated the importance of mind over matter. Because we are in a spiritual battle, and the enemy desires your mind. Now, you trust me on this. Right now, today, someone is going to win the battle of the mind in your life. And guess what the beautiful thing is? You can determine whether you win or whether you lose. It is the focus, it is your reasoning, it is your thinking that's going to make a difference in whether or not you win the battle of the mind. One of the things that's dangerous is we can lose today, for an example, but you've got to recover the next day. You can't lose today, then tomorrow, and then the next day. The disadvantage is the enemy gets too strong a hold over your life. Pulling down strongholds are not easy. The more space, the more territory that the enemy takes in your life, the more difficult it is for you to recover. You need to understand that. But nonetheless, the method is still the same. Your reasoning, your focus, your perception of a situation that you end up using your mind to overcome whatever the matter, whatever you can taste, feel, touch, uh, uh, that's in your life that you do not want there you have decreeing power through the Holy Spirit to start making things different in your life. Amen. Back to the handout. <clears throat> Mind over matter is not a mechanism of denial, but one of operating in faith and trusting God with the outcome of our life challenges. I, personally, I think that the church has gotten so accustomed to complaining that I think we complain and we're not even conscious that we complain. But I guarantee you, whoever's listening to you is conscious that you're complaining. Because what it does, just like our excitement and our joy and our peace and our love ignites, so does the complaining. When we complain, a person can come to you, oh, I just really love Jesus, I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah, well. I know the church, you know, the church, somebody's always doing something, they ain't got no, you know, it's just, and, and you're going to do one or two things. You're either going to correct, you're going to back up, or you're going to join. Yeah, that is true. Uh, folks in the church could do better. Yeah, but it has to start with you. You know, it's like we always think in terms of outside of myself. If things in the church need to be better, then let it start with you. Do this make sense? You know, I'm going to be all messy and all this other stuff, and I'm going to go out talking about folk. Well, if I'm messy, then I guarantee you I got some followers. I guarantee you if I'm messy, I have some companions. Well, the opposite is true. If I'm excited about Jesus, I got some followers. If I love the Lord, I have some followers because that's what I share. So it's important we understand that it's not denial. What we actually see going on on this earth in our life that we don't like, that is causing us pain, discomfort, et cetera, et cetera. We're not saying it does not exist. We're just saying heaven has some answers, and I'm going to find a way to tap into those answers and get rid of whatever this is. Amen? Did you know the brain has massive amounts of untapped power? 
massive amounts of untapped power. Do you know how matter-of-factly the Lord told Joseph, look, Joshua, look, look, Moses, my servant, is dead. He said, I want you to be strong and I want you to be of a good courage. You're getting ready to go into a land flowing with milk and honey. He said, but I, I'm telling you, the only thing I don't want you to do, I don't want you to fear. I want you to be strong and of a good courage. Wherever your feet tread upon, that's going to be yours. Guess what Joshua did? He believed the Lord. Now, were the Anakins still in the land that Joshua went in to conquer, that the first century, the first era Christians uh, or Israelites, no, Israelites, were those giants still there when Joshua went into the promised land to fight? Were they still there? The same giants that the other Israelites, the older ones, said they're, these Anakins, these giants in the land, said we can't conquer them. They were the same giants. The brain has enormous power. So the Lord said, look, wherever your feet tread, that's going to be yours. Now, spiritually, what that means to me is when you're born again and you live by the Spirit of God, you just come into places. You don't take over, but you walk in authority. You know, it's like you watch what you say, you watch what you do. You carry yourself in a way that you ignite something around you. Amen. So that's what I look at. Wherever your feet tread upon, wherever I go someplace, I might even be quiet and sit and smile. Uh, somebody might ask me something. And I know a lot of times I astound people with what I say. Because on an average, our society expect women to be quiet, docile, domesticated, unlearned, ignorant, yada, 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 yada. But when someone will say something and ask me a question, I know a lot of times that I astound people, but it's because I spend a lot of times in the presence of God. I know where the wisdom is. I know where the knowledge is. I know where the power is. So why would I ignore that when I understand that I've entered into a spiritual battle and there's a battle for my mind? So each day it is renewed. And I feel prepared always to give someone an answer for the hope that lies within me. And that is how we ignite and, and, and wherever we walk, glory be to God, that we take authority just like Joshua did. Do you remember how matter-of-factly Jesus walked the water? I mean, it wasn't like, let me see, let me get out here and test it. I don't know, Lord, uh, you might let me sink. But he just, you know, he just, he just walked out on the water. The brain has so much untapped power. And I know that there was something that was going on. I don't understand it because I can't swim, so I wouldn't do it. So I'm keeping it real, you know what I mean? It's like I can't see myself walking out in the water. The Lord would have to tell me. He'd have to send me several indicators and confirmations <laughs> that he wanted me to get out there. And I believe I would. Because I trust him just that much. And I can't swim. But think about how matter-of-factly Joshua went into the promised land. Jesus walked the water. I mean, Peter just did what he did uh, uh, because of the boldness that was in him. The church is not using her brain at the level that she can. And that's what this, war, this teaching on warfare is all about. The enemy's after your brain your mind rather, and you need to determine today what, how much of it you're going to give over to God. Amen? Because he, he desires your brain. Next, did you know researchers estimate that 97% of the brain goes unmanaged and unused? With that limited use of mind power, we become creatures of habit, only using approximately 3% of our brain's function. Do you know that that 3% that we use, the enemy is after that? He is after that 3% that we use. I say in, in Jesus, let's start to raising the bar and using the brain's power more often. And when I looked at that, I'm saying, okay, 97%, it even challenged me. 97% of the brain's power in me is likely unused. So then it made me wonder, well, my God, what could I do? 
Because a lot of times I'm tired of doing so much, but I wonder then, it made me wonder, am I doing the right thing if only about 3% of the brain's power that I have is being used? The next bullet. Did you know our thoughts shape and determine what kind of world we will create for ourselves? Without the guidance of the Spirit, our thoughts will greatly limit our abilities to go farther and reach higher. Without the guidance of the Spirit. You know what? Because we're creatures of habit. Get up, uh, brush your teeth, wash your face, maybe turn on, watch the news, go to work, do your job, come back. Eat dinner, watch the news, lay down, go to sleep. Get up, wash your face, brush your teeth, uh, maybe turn on the news, go to work, <laughs> come back home, uh, eat dinner, lay down, go to sleep. Preachers of heaven. And you know what? And we don't see anything wrong with it because we didn't knock anybody in the head, rob anybody, embezzle any money, all this other stuff. But we are useless in the kingdom of God if that's all we give in God. Creatures of habit, using 3% of 97% of brain power. When I saw that, it convicted me. Next, did you know, for the church to learn how to fight without beating the air, we need to discipline, train, and manage our minds to operate, excuse the typo, to operate in the faith of the spirit and not be deterred by the matter around us. That, again, it's not that we don't see. We don't, it's not that we don't feel. It's not that it is not bothering us. I am not saying become emotionalist or what's called stoic. I'm not asking that. I am just saying that you do what you know you can do and you rely on the Holy Spirit to do the rest. Amen. Is there, are there any questions? Any questions at all? Okay. Now, if you look at your booklet where it says spiritual warfare is real. Spiritual warfare is real. Please, everybody say that. Spiritual warfare is real. And I want you to repeat after me on this one. There is a battle, is a battle for my mind, for my mind and, I win. and I win. Why? Why? Because, because I, am going to fight I am going to fight and not as one beating the air. That's why you're going to win. You're not going to fight as one beating the air. Today, I want you to have the mind. You're going to pull down strongholds. Can anyone remember what I said a stronghold is? A stronghold is a well-fortified place. Now, remember when we, there was some teaching we were doing that I, I can't remember the name of it, but I showed you uh, Jericho. And Joshua went into Jericho. When they came, when they crossed over uh, uh, the Jordan, they, where did they, they, they had a camp. It wasn't Gilead. It wasn't Gilead. But anyway, they had a camp. They came over the Jordan and they set, set up camp. Well, when they would go into battle, when they would come back, they would go into battle, they would win the battle, and they would come back to that camp. Well, the first battle was Jericho. And the reason that first battle was Jericho because it was a well-fortified place. And it's like the Lord is saying, you know what, if I can get you to win this one, if I can build up your confidence that you can uh, take a city that is as well fortified as Jericho, then the other cities will be easy. Well, everybody has a major challenge in their life. And I guarantee you that once you overcome that major challenge, it's almost like you just walk through victory. I mean, it's like, you know, you, you don't want to say bring it on, but it's like whatever it is that the Lord has for you, to put before you that you need to deal with, you win it and the battle, and you win it with confidence. So in uh, 2 Corinthians 10, uh, uh, chapter 10, verses 4 and 5, it says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, this is not an earthly battle. You don't win this battle by shooting somebody. The bat this battle is, the, 
The weapons of this warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds are well fortified places. And if you look at the board, you have a better understanding of what it is that I am talking about because the, 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 the battle is uh, the things that are surrounding us. Amen. So I am going to have to end the broadcast. Glory, this went awfully fast. And I thank everyone for tuning in today. This has been awesome. There should be a part two uh, next week. No, the third week, there will be a part two. I thank you for tuning in one more time. If you will remember the supporters of this broadcast, Johnny Pearson, um, Diane Tasley, my husband, Freddie Dare, and Paul Herring. Thank you very much for tuning in with us today. And remember, you're entering a spiritual battle. Spiritual warfare is real. And if you trust God, you're going to win the battle. Amen. Glory to God. He promised us that he would be a counselor. A mighty God and a Prince of Peace. He promised us that he would be a father and would love us with a love that would not cease. Spears, and I'm inviting everybody to come out and be a part of the planning meeting for Prayer Chain Day. It's every second Monday at Foot Rutgers off of Miller Road, and everyone is invited. So come out, be a part, eat with a purpose. Just call me at 810 766 8887. Crafted the skyscrapers alone, but on the ground, by those who could see what needed to be done. Volunteers who, in service, step forward onto the dust of the levee in the heartland, the marble steps of a dream. You may ask yourself, "Where's my my levee, my dream?" Well, it's here, with you. Step forward, help renew America at USAService.org. Underneath everything we are, we are all people. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the world. Live united.